Okay, uh, I'm just making a video just to demonstrate to you the final steps of this project after you've made your model. Um, you need to like do what I've done here. I've just set up the, the computer with the camera and I'm just trying to do this in one take. It's going to be pretty rough and ready, but um, the whole idea behind this is that you need to be able to explain the process, what's going on um, in the body system that you've chosen. Um, and the model's there as a way to help you demonstrate and remind you as you've been building it, you've been remembering what each of these things do. So let's, let's go through there. Um, just might have to change the angle here. So we focus it on um, what's happening here. I've done the digestive system. I've started up here with uh, a bit of garden hose at the back, at the back here, um, leading into the tummy. Now, I've set this up here because um, it's easy to get confused and you need to know the difference here. And you can feel this uh, when you um, play around and feel just gently. You can feel your uh, voice box, your Adam's apple here, and this is your trachea, your windpipe. Okay, that's always in all animals is sitting at the front here. So um, it's good to know because if you've ever got to put a tube down into some into the stomach, um, you've got to be really careful about doing that and not getting it into the lungs. Now uh, I've got the stopper up here because this is I've used this to represent the epiglottis when we when we swallow, the epiglottis uh, is tissue that just closes over to protect the windpipe and so we don't choke on anything um, as we swallow our food down into this, this tube down here. So I've just got these little uh, food things from the, I don't know, from the supermarkets in here. I've put some batteries in here just to represent all the acid inside the stomach here. Um, and just to try and get across the idea that this is a very acidic environment. Um, and that how it starts the process of chemically breaking down the food um, and breaking all the food into the smaller nutrients. What I haven't got up here, I haven't got the jaw, um, the teeth, the tongue, which do a really good job of chopping up the food and mixing it up. Plus in the side of our jaw, we've got the saliva glands here that secrete enzymes that actually is the very first step of breaking down some of those very simple sugars in our food. Uh, but the acid down here is it's really acidic environment and it does a job of chemically breaking up the food. Um, I've got some rubber bands here to represent little sphincters. They are like little rubber bands because uh, we've all had that experience when we've been sick or we've burped up something and we get a bit of reflux and a bit of that acid comes back up into this tube here and it really burns. We really feel it. Or if we vomit, then you know we all have that experience of having the contents of our stomach traveling back up and how um, you know, apart from how bad we feel about that, but also uh, that acid will be damaging the lining there of the esophagus. Okay, so uh, another sphincter on this side coming out of the stomach. Um, and just to control the movement of these things, what's going to happen really quickly in this small section of the small intestine, the first section of the small intestine, that acid needs to be neutralized and we've got uh, things to help us with that. We've got the, the pancreas here secreting a whole heap of chemicals um, to help with that. We have uh, the liver and the bile gland here secreting uh, chemicals that help break up fat and all kinds of things. Um, and then I've, I've made, got it to flow used a bit more of that tube to do the small intestine. Now the small intestine is when you do a, a live dissection or uh, something like that, um, is quite narrow. Um, 
and small tube, but it is quite a long tube uh, because there's a lot of absorption of nutrients that has to occur in the small intestine. And so that's why I looped it around like that to remind myself that the actual small intestine is quite long, whereas the, in comparison, the large intestine where it comes into over here, um, we have an ascending loop, a transverse loop and a descending loop of uh, the large intestine. Quite large, but in terms of length is, is quite short. Okay. Uh, and that's a message I'm trying to get across there. Before we move on from the small intestine, there's a couple of things that we need to look at. And I've, I've, I've labelled this and I'm reading off here now because I don't remember this stuff. This is a celi celiac artery, the branches from the abdominal aorta, which is probably why I've used that cotton meal because that's quite a large artery. And what it's doing here, and I've just used a bit of onion bag, I think, or an orange bag or something, and um, to represent the capillaries. So all this food is moving across from the uh, small wall of the small intestine into our uh, circulation system, and it's moving into the capillaries. But what's got to happen here is we've got this bed of capillaries, and if we just let the blood flow around to the heart and then back here, eventually it'll end up at the liver up the top here, but this is a little bypass system that actually takes this, all the nutrients uh, through um, a portal system back to the liver, back to here. So um, food gets processed a lot quick, quicker, okay, um, and it makes its way to the liver where it, the liver does a huge number of jobs um, and one of those is to process those nutrients. So that's why I've got that. Uh, let's have used pink wool here, red for the capillaries and blue for the veins, it, which matches up with, with what you see in the colour coding system of a lot of uh, textbooks. Okay. So we go in here, uh, one more thing, I've found a little toy here that I've attached it here because in the digestive system it's a great place for uh, bugs to live. Some of those bugs are healthy bugs and we promote that with the kind of things that we eat uh, and drink, so kombucha and um, yogurt and stuff like that helps promote um, uh, good bacteria in our digestive system. But it's also a place where we get a lot of parasites living in there, getting a free lunch and uh, um, you know, living their life as a parasite. So I've got that there to remind me of that. We've got here the appendix, this little bit that sometimes if it gets inflamed, we uh, it's quite easily to do a bit of surgery and remove that. We go into the, the large intestine and I've got this little bit of plasticine here just to remind us Okay, of the process of what's happening in there. It's kind of, I've got these rubber bands here. here. This is not poo just yet, but um, the only thing that's getting absorbed in the large intestine is water. So by this stage, what we're doing is trying to remove as much water as we can from the large intestine because just think about every time you have diarrhea, this process is being stopped and you can you know how dehydrated you get and how dangerous that can be um, if the large intestine stops doing the job of reabsorbing water. So this, how all this uh, uh, leftover material that's on its way to being turned into feces is moved along the di uh, large intestine by more or less like these rubber bands here, your large intestine contracts and this process is called peristalsis and it helps move all this stuff along to the final part here where we've got the rectum and then, in, then the anus here and I've just got some something in here to remind me that it takes 20 to 44 hours for the indigestible material to be moved through the digestive system and when it reaches 
the rectum, we then go to the toilet and finally avoid all those wastes. So um, that's uh, the story that I've got, and that's why I made these um, this model just to help me explain and talk about those things. So that's that's the kind of demonstration I've got for you, um, and that's the kind of thing that I'm expecting at the end uh, for you to do. And like I've done here, one take, no editing, um, just uh, let it all flow out. Okay, all right, bye.